Hey guys, BuffaQ32 here. I thought for my second video I would talk a little bit about the first handgun I ever purchased. Um, shortly after I turned 21, I uh, began the process of looking for a handgun. Um, I was about to apply for my handgun permit and uh, just thought I'd go ahead and start looking around, see what I liked, what turned me on, what turned me off, that sort of thing. Um, I thought this would be an interesting topic because the handgun I ended up selecting um, is this one you see here before you. This is a Springfield 1911 Model A1 in 45 ACP. This is the loaded model. Um, I was told by a close family friend that I would absolutely hate this handgun. Uh, I was told that it would um, be far too difficult to field strip, not completely disassemble, but just field strip. Um, I was told that it would be too heavy for me to ever want to carry, and um, that given the price of ammo at the time, this has been several years ago, but given the price of ammo at the time, I wouldn't even be able to afford to shoot it much. Um, the gentleman who, who told me all these things, I have a lot of respect for him, and he's got much more experience um, in the uh, firearm community than I do. Uh, and so when he told me all these things, um, it, it really kind of um, initially turned me off to this handgun because I thought, well, gosh, I, I, I suppose he's right. Um, but I went to look anyway because I thought, well, I want to look for myself and see what I think and talk to a few other people. Of course, I didn't want to listen to just one person. Um, and so I went to a local neighborhood gun shop and began to browse. And the gentleman behind the counter, um, who I'm still close friends with to this day, essentially laid out several options, um, not just automatics, revolvers as well, uh, large frame, full frame guns like you see here, all the way down to small pocket pistols, and basically said, whatever you think is the most attractive in terms of just its, its physical appearance or the way it feels in your hand, that's probably going to end up being what you want to go with. He said, I can talk to you about all the differences between um, calibers and all the ballistic differences between, you know, a 9mm to a, a 40 and to a 45 and a 10mm and all these different things. And he said, but essentially what it usually comes down to is what you think feels the best in your hand and what you think looks the best is often what people end up going with. Um, because again, as I mentioned in my first video, if I'm going to spend money on something, and this was not a cheap, <laughs> a cheap purchase by any means, if I'm going to spend money on something, I want it to be something that I find essentially perfect in, in almost every sense. So he pulled out the, um, a couple of the 1911s, um, and this one just caught my eye. Um, I really liked the looks. I really liked um, the extended beaver tail. Um, the front serrations I, I wasn't so crazy about, um, and I'm st still not completely sold on them. I mean, they're fine. Um, I can honestly say I've never used them. I've never felt the need to, to um, grab the, the slide that far up front, but I'm, I suppose that they have their purpose. Um, but other than that, I just, I really liked the aesthetics of this handgun, and I thought, well, you know, um, Springfield, certainly a reliable brand that's been around for many, many years. And um, so after um, a couple of weeks of research, uh, I went ahead and, and committed and um, purchased this as my first firearm. Um, <laughs> what was humorous about it was, Immediately after I bought it, the gentleman who had been sort of bashing it um, asked if he could shoot it. Um, I, I told him I was going to the range, and he said, well, can I meet you there? I'd be interested to shoot it. 
And I said, yeah, that, yeah, that's fine with me. Um, you know. So I met him at the range, and he uh, he brought his own ammunition, which I thought was 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 nice of him. I was certainly willing to let him use my own, but brought his own ammunition. And um, after he shot the thing for I don't know maybe I don't know maybe five ten minutes, um, he he laid it down and he said, you know, that's that's a pretty nice firearm. Um, I'm, I might consider buying one of those for myself. <laughs> I thought, um, what happened? <laughs> because as of a couple weeks ago, you were dead against this thing. And um, after talking to him more after this happened, I found out that he basically was giving me his opinion based off of what he had heard for himself, not what he had found for himself. Um, he didn't have any handguns that were a 1911 battery of arms, so he didn't really uh, know for himself that, oh yeah, it, it, it can be really difficult to field strip. Well, actually, in fact, no, it's it's not that difficult to field strip. Um, I mean, I suppose if you're, a, if you're a revolver person, then yeah, it could seem uh, a little daunting. Or, you know, if you're a, a Glock person, then yeah, it's got a few more parts than, than a Glock might, but still not a, a super difficult feat. So I just found it interesting that um, he so quickly changed his opinion um, on this firearm. Now, I will agree that he was absolutely correct about one thing. How often I carry it. Yep, I'm one of those guys who fell right into the, um, the category of buys a 1911, carries it for six months, then doesn't really carry it that much after that. Yep, that's me, and I completely admit it. However, the nice thing about this is had I not purchased this as my first handgun, I probably never would have purchased it, period. And I'm certainly glad that I do have it, because, um, I mean, again, it's just it's one of my favorites. Um, it's, it's certainly one of the finest ones in my collection. Um, I do shoot it often. Um, you know, probably 75% of the time I go to the range, I do throw it in the bag and bring it along and, and do some shooting with it. But just to be honest, um, yeah, when it's time to carry something, uh, I often leave this in the safe. Um, and it's nothing against... Um, you know, Springfield or, or anything like that. It's just, you know, this is this is a huge chunk of steel um, versus some of these new little, um, you know, wonder polymer guns uh, and little, you know, J-frame revolvers. It's like, you know, trying to carry a kindergartner around all day. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's it gets um, to be a bit much after a while. But still glad I bought it. Very much, very much like this handgun. Um, just kind of a funny little story about that. Now, the reason I have, if, if you've noticed, the reason I have uh, my um, paramilitary 2 sitting out here is because this kind of has a similar story. Um, bought this from the same store I bought my Springfield from. They also sell, got a great selection of knives there. And... The gentleman who uh, was working the knife counter one day saw me looking at this knife and uh, came over and asked me if I wanted to look at it. And um, once he showed it to me, he basically began bashing it. And that really surprised me because I have heard nothing but good things about Spider Code Paramilitary. And the more he, he told me about it, um, the more it became obvious to me that he he kind of had unrealistic expectations for this knife, really for any knife. Um, I asked him, you know, why he had these issues with it, and he said, well, I had one of these years ago, and he had some piece of a um, uh, uh, an engine, a motor. He was working on a car motor, and some little piece he was working on fell down into the uh, engine block, and he used this knife to try and pry 
two pieces of um, that engine block apart from one another to try and open up, I guess, like a little channel so he could get a magnet down inside that motor to get the piece out. And he said that, uh, and, and that blade just broke on me. It broke on me. And I just, I, th I think that's unacceptable in a blade. And I thought to myself, this is a pocket knife, not a pry bar. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that if you were trying to <laughs> cut open an engine, <laughs> essentially, yeah, um, it doesn't surprise me that it broke. Um, that's not a realistic expectation for this knife. That's not what it's made to do. Um, so anyway, basically once I found out why he was complaining about it, I thought, okay, well, you've just lost, like, all credibility. And so I went ahead and purchased the knife. And this knife, just like my Springfield here, it's one of my absolute favorite in my collection. Um, just, I mean, it's great, great steel. Um, you know, it's, it's that um, S30V steel. Um, I love that Spyderco puts on there USA Earth. I don't know why. I just I think that's great. Um, this thing holds a wonderful edge. It's a great EDC knife. Um, you know, wonderful grips. Wonderful um, G10 scales on this thing. Just got a great feel to it. Um, still relatively lightweight in the pocket. Um, again, I've got the little uh, lanyard and um, zip tie mod. Um, on this thing that I've, I've discovered from watching Nothing Fancy's channel that I really like on my knives. Um, so anyway, just kind of another funny little strange story about uh, a couple things in my collection that, um, you know, had I listened to others uh, and not really done any research for myself, probably wouldn't have uh, ever purchased. Um, so kind of an interesting story there. Anyway, um, as always, stay tuned. I'm still trying to get lots of videos cranked out right now. Like I said, I'm, I'm on a bit of a, a break right now from work, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to get more stuff out to you soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.